It's been a week or two since I got that 3D printer, a G-Tech Prusa i3. I've been having a lot of fun playing around with it and I went through like half a row of the black ABS there and every day I kind of learn something new and I just want to share what I learned today. Maybe it's like common knowledge with uh, people that have been playing around with uh, 3D printers but for me it's still something new. I made a lot of uh, little gadgets that I found on uh, Thinkiverse like for this battery pack there's a balance uh, uh, charging um, wires here and I made like a cover for it and uh, XT60 cable uh, connector there's another cap that you can print off thingy first right so that's a makes the 3D printer pretty useful for me and now uh, another thing that I made was um, these are low voltage indicators this one is for 12 volt and this one here I put in the case already is for 9.6 volt but unfortunately for these black ABS plastics when you print them Maybe the hollow, the core of the plastic is white and only the surface is black, I don't know. But you see you have this white part here after you peel off the brim. And uh, I didn't know how to get rid of it. I was using like a black magic cup marker to, uh, to just tint it or to cover it. Like these here, just use a black magic marker. And um, today, and I was playing around with this box here, I, I put the lid on and I wasn't sure how to secure the lid to the box here. Originally I cut grooves on the sides, but they didn't come out too well. I was going to slide the cover on. That didn't work out too well. So what I did, I just used a hot glue gun and sort of like melt the uh, plastic and I'm sure if you use some kind of a jig if you have it set up you have your soldering iron you just you can just slide something through and it would be a much smoother well and then of course a lot of the plastic leftovers you can use you can save you know like this is a misprint you can use this to uh, for plastic welding. You can weld your car bumper, um, you, you crack your bumper and you cut it in the strip and and you can use it for welding. And uh, for a line like this, if you just lightly run over it, the white part, or you can wipe it, you can see it turns the white into black. Right? That's better than using your magic marker, right? And and the plastic will just burn off the uh, the tip of the soldering iron. So mix it much better than before. Plus, of course, instead of using glue, you can just weld it weld it shut. Right. I actually bought a Harbor Freight welder for uh, for mending the bumper in my car. I haven't used it yet. It's like oh less than twenty dollars. This is it if you wanna if you 
want something more heavy duty, this is 80 watts. Or any soldering iron will do. So that's what I learned today. And uh, so I made a box, right? So this would be attached to the battery plugged into the balance cable connector and well, maybe I'll glue it onto the case here and then you use the XT60 connector to to power the load that you want to power you know use it and when the voltage drops to 9.6 your LED LED comes on and you know that you can't use it anymore that's better than the BMS that I use in my other pack because that BMS is only 3 to 4 amp unless you use like a 20 amp BMS uh, which uh, they now have you can you can use that also but this simple device you know would also work like this battery is uh, is of course only four volts or so so the LED would come on so that's what I learned I mean every day you you learn something new with the 3d printer and constantly dropping things with the tripod here okay uh, as for the 3d printer itself I made some modifications also I had a video up on this what I call frictionless feed and it's working very well there's no tangle but because it's riding on like a lazy Susan kind of uh, uh, table so it spins very smoothly no problem with that um, bought some extra glue I find myself buying glue all the time so I'm trying instead of the Elmer's glues I'm trying some of these cheaper glues that are like four for dollar sixty nine there's very little glue in here so um, although I found that once you set the correct nozzle to hot plate height sometimes it, it holds for quite a few prints and until I have to wash off the glue then I might have to do another adjustment and I, I print, print a, quite a few stuff and some of this uh, like a box that I made they they're not perfect and sometimes you don't know why because when you use a sketch up you push pull and then sometimes the walls become hollow and or the bottom get messed up like this one so I'm still learning, but uh, it's been fun. I uh, added another fan. I found this heat sink and a computer fan on the side of the street, and I, I picked up the 80 millimeter fan, and I added it to the side here to cool the main board. The power transistors here there are three of them they get very hot there's a 40 millimeter fan that comes with the 3d printer it's pretty strong but after the printer's been on for a couple of hours the power transistors get very hot because I'm running it like like all day so the 40 millimeter fan is a big is now the room is about 64 degrees but in the summer it's gonna get very hot and this fan will will have a help a lot it's actually very cool and I'm running it separately from the power supply here I use the AC coming in and I added uh, my own separate power supply this is like a a 10 volt uh, 1.6 amp power supply I just splice in the AC 
onto the AC supply here and um, I was thinking of using those uh, Waco connectors yeah this is the Waco connector you can split your AC and but I have to find a spot for it because I don't want to put it where all the rails are uh, maybe on the other side so temporarily I just hook it up to the AC here you have to be careful because AC is of course high voltage and then uh, the 10 volt I just I just uh, I just run it across and power the fan there so that way you know the 5 or 6 watt that the fan needs will not be running off the power supply because this is only a 15 amp power supply I already added a uh, 80 millimeter that's also 80 millimeter and I added a 40 millimeter there so after a while you're not gonna have too much uh, capacity from the on the original power supply so I think it's better to have a separate power supply plus I have a whole box full of these uh, switching power supplies and they're just sitting there so um, you better off having a uh, more dependable power supply let's turn it on and see uh, it's, the fan originally runs on it's a 12 volt fan and it makes a lot of noise because it's 12 volt it's very powerful and the 10 volt is just right for it it's, it's not it's a little noisy but it's not as bad as when it's running 12 volt so this is a silent fan but silent means it's not that powerful this uh, I picked this up for like four dollars and you can hear it this is this is the other fan and it's very powerful and after an hour or two I touch the heatsink is still cool it's not hot at all plus you have the stepper motor drivers there they get hot too especially the ones that are running the X and the Y um, belt or stepper motor so uh, yeah um, that is it and I was throwing out all these scrap ABS plastic maybe I can save some of them and use them to weld plastic parts all right thanks for watching this is the only box that I printed that is like halfway decent so far so all right thanks for watching